Yay, excellent. Right, is this everybody? Then we'll begin. Um, well, it's great to be at another DevConf. Um, thanks everybody for turning up. I hope I'm not going to bore you too much. Um, first of all, I've got to extend my heartfelt thanks to the entire DevConf team, in particular the two local guys who've done a ridiculous amount of work. Please, anyone, if you bump into Anto or Cesar during this week, hug them, buy them beer, whatever. They deserve it. <laughs> now, you may remember just under a year ago down in Argentina, quite a long way away, I stood up in front of quite a lot of you people, maybe not all of you, but a lot of you, and tried to tell you a bit, bit more bits about Debian that you probably already knew. Apologies, this is probably going to be more of the same, but hopefully not entirely. So, where does Debian fit in? Debian, back in 1993, well, the Linux world was very different back then. Ian announced to the world his brand new Linux release, and look, it's so good I can even manage to reuse the same slide I used last year. <laughs> um, Debian will be built from scratch, inspired by not, but, but not based on SLS, sleek and slim but extensively documented, and it would have easy installation. Now, in 1993, easy installation meant something rather different to what it does now. <laughs> and, back then, there weren't that many other distros. Um, there were a handful, frankly, you know, there was very little competition for users. Um, there were not many distros. In 2009, God forbid, nearly 16 years later, we have, as of yesterday, and I checked this with the Keyring maintainer, we have 1,029 developers. We have 26,000, and I think it was 13, I could be wrong, binary packages in i386 SID. We have dozens of. I tried looking for all of them, and I gave up after an hour. I found several dozen. There's probably hundreds, just I can't find some of them, of distributions that not necessarily co compete with us, but are actually using our code and building on it. We're releasing roughly every two years. <laughs> well, we're aiming for better than that. We're managing better than that. We may be not, not, be, a, not be hitting the 18 months that some, some, of, the develop, some of the journalists think, think we're claiming, but we're still coming in in less than two years. It's, it's okay. Now, the, the possibly even the biggest difference, we have shed loads of other distributions. Um, a quick search um, on LWN, on DistroWatch, and a few other sites showed thousands of different Linux distributions. Wow. Now, <laughs> um, I spoke to quite a few people. I've, I've done quite a lot of research for this. And Noodles found me looking at them and said, you're not going to fill your talk up using quotes from lots of people. Yeah, sure as hell I am. Saves, saves me writing crap. I found on DistroWatch a description of Debian, which almost fits on the screen. Apparently, this is what they consider as a con. We're conservative. Due to our support for many processor architectures, newest technologies are not always included. We have a slow release cycle, and discussions on our mailing lists and blogs can be uncultured at times. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's being quite gentle. <laughs> mm. Now, other things I've heard in the last week. Now, somebody did say to me over dinner, I'm not going to name names. Why does Debian always seem to be on the verge of imploding? <laughs> and equally, in the last week, I've heard from a friend that Debian is the best and most stable Linux distribution he's ever used. Um, we've got some really very different stories, though, depending on who you talk to. Why are those differences so big? Well, there's some obvious answers. We have some differences in what the users are expecting. We've got some people who love the fact that we release every two years, would like prefer it to be three or even four, because in that way their data center just works. They never have to look at it, no problems. The people with laptops, the people who've got the very latest bleeding edge Broadcom chipsets and whatever, oh my god, they need, they need a new kernel, they need new everything every, every day, otherwise it's not going to work. 
we've had differences in experiences. For some people, things really do just work. Everything, out the box, no issues. Some people, well, it almost all works, but, well, I don't get working 3D, or why can't I play DVDs back, or my sound's a bit crap. And of course, we get different levels of user. Um, now, for most of the people in this room, we're going to be developers. We're not going to have any issues. Well, hopefully, fingers crossed. But even if we do, well, yeah, it's fun to go and fix the issues and tell, tell other people what we've done. For, of course, for a brand new user, if, if it doesn't work, you know, if partitioning fails during the installer, or if it doesn't find their hard disk or whatever, that's not a cool thing to play with. That's a, that's a showstopper problem. So are we, in fact, the thing that we've claimed to be for years, the universal operating system? Hands up. Who thinks we are? <laughs> OK, we have a few. Cool. you optimists. I like that. <laughs> so moving on. We've got lots of teams in Debian. You may remember we've talked about this lots. We've got lots of teams that are working well. We've got, unfortunately, quite a few that aren't. I did a team survey to find out exactly which teams were doing well and which weren't um, just over a year ago when I first was elected DPL. Um, I'm not going to do the same thing to you any, again anytime soon, but the, the, the information that came out of that was very, very useful. What I have found out since then is that the individual teams that are having problems may change, but overall the average issue is eh, it's about the same. It, we, we constantly have a, a situation where we need people to put effort in. We constantly need new people joining teams. Every single team, especially the core teams, is looking for new people. That's, let's be honest, that's never going to change. Now, new maintainers, this is something that keeps on coming up. Hands up. Well, in fact, if you're one of the people listed here, of course you can read this. <laughs> please, if you know that you become a new maintainer last year, please stand up. Let's have a look at you. I know there's quite a few of you here. <laughs> yeah, go on, keep going. And I know there's a few more names that I didn't make it on here because we, uh, we had at least one new, 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 new developer today. I mean, for God's sake, guys, let, give me a chance to keep the slides up to date. <laughs> now, uh, did I say sit down? Go on. <laughs> yeah, go on, stand up. <laughs> so, what can you guys do to help Debian? What should you do? Firstly and foremost, go and dive in. Go and do stuff. Don't be scared. Yes, Anna? <laughs> yes, what's fun? <laughs> um, don't be scared of doing stuff. Yeah, people make mistakes. People fix mistakes as well. That's what software development's all about, in my experience. Um, if you want to really help, go and see which teams are asking for help. Um, the chances are there'll be a lot of them. You know, in some of them, you may be able to dive in. If not, you may be able to dive in in six months' time once you've been around a bit longer and you've learned a bit more. Even more importantly, go and find the teams that need help, even if they're not admitting to it. Those are the people who really need it. Find whatever interests you. And I'm hoping that there's got to be something in Debian that interests you. Otherwise, really, why the hell did you go through a new maintainer? <laughs> <laughs> and finally, think about working on the core stuff too. You know, I said a couple of slides back, we're always looking for more people for core teams. That isn't going to change. Please, I don't know, Adam, come on, stand up. <laughs> Adam has dived straight in into DevScript. He's just about to be um, officially outed as a new member of the release team. I hope. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> um, please, he's great. I like him. I'll buy him beer. <laughs> right. The flip side of that, um, a lot of new maintainers seem to think, and this is not entirely their own fault, this is, there's a lot of documentation out there, which is good, but it does emphasize, possibly overemphasize, the idea that people should be working on packaging new things. Before you go and package something new, especially once you're actually in Debian, go and have a look. Do we really need yet another web server? 
do we really need yet another music player? Even if, even if this one chew it. <laughs> do we really need yet another calculator or yet another variation on, on your favorite shell script that, that has this brand new gorgeous feature that nobody else has heard of? Honest. Yeah. Even more importantly, when you, when you get bored of it in six months, and it will happen, will anybody else maintain it? Or is it just going to get sat in the archive? I mean, I've been around probably longer than I care to think. I've moved on. I started doing a lo whole load of audio stuff. I don't maintain any audio stuff anymore. I've moved on. I made sure I orphaned some of those packages at the point when they clearly weren't useful. I moved on. I'm now stuck do generating CDs every time we do a release. God, that's really tedious, but I haven't, found, I haven't got too bored of it yet. Um, the thing to be careful of, and I'm sure there's a lot of people here would agree, we have too much crap in our archive. Um, don't add to it. If anything, the release team and the poor bastards like me who have to try and fit it all on CDs and DVDs at the end of a release cycle will love you even more for pulling out a crap package as opposed to putting in three more. Innovating. Are we doing enough cool new stuff? Who thinks we are? Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> Again, this is possibly rose-tinted spectacles. When I joined Debian back in 96, wow, it was cool. There was so much energy. Everything new was going on every week, and it was impossible to keep up. These days, I'm not quite so sure. I mean, we do have... Go on, Martin. Yes. I'm not, yes, yes, you have a very good point. And then, should we be waiting for other distros to do, to do the cool new stuff instead? Jesus Christ, no. I want to do cool stuff. Hands up anyone here who doesn't want to do cool stuff when they're developing. <laughs> One of the problems that we have, and I'm sure... There's a couple of, a couple of examples that have been on the Debian Devel in the last month that people, I'm sure, will recognize from this. By God, do we do a lot of bike shedding. It's, we have people who want to do new things, who have great ideas. Rather than saying, that's great, it's a, that's great, but shouldn't it be green? You know, or I think, you know, shouldn't, we do, shouldn't we do it this way instead? Which in the end actually doesn't make the slightest bit of difference to the idea but instead it devolves the whole, you know, drags the whole thing into a two-week conversation. By the, by the, and by the time that's finished, a lot of people are just going to have lost the effort, lost the energy they had in the first place, and it may never happen. Why do we do this? Any ideas? Yeah. Absolutely. And that's cool. People should feel they're having a contribution. But... Before you start trying to dive in, make sure that your contribution really is useful. That's not to say don't contribute, but think about it, please, for everyone. Yes, there's a thousand of us. That means that if we all really want to have our say, bloody hell, the mailing lists are going to get very busy very quickly. Um, and if somebody else has already said, made your point for you, leave it. You don't have to actually reinforce. You don't have to restate it. We also have lots of people saying no to new ideas. Typically, something on the lines of, we've always done it this way. Well, just because somebody, and chances are it could be somebody, some old git like me or Bdel 15 years ago decided, I know, let's do it this way, that doesn't mean it's right. It's just that it's old. <laughs> you know, there's not necessarily any guarantee that it is the best way. There's a fair chance, because Bdel and I are both good people. But hey. <laughs> Even Bdel Yes. Exactly. So don't necessarily assume that, what, that the new idea that you don't understand is therefore immediately bad. Give people some, a chance. Let them, have a, let them have a go. Fundamentally, try saying yes. I know that may sound like a really silly self-help thing. Yay, go, go for it. Go out and say yes to everybody. There's a really crap movie been out this year that, that, that does exactly that. Um, but we are trying to work together here, not argue together. In the end, we are trying to produce an operating system. At least I hope we are. See how it works out. Oh, that really doesn't work out. <laughs> um, see how it works out. See what people can come up with. 
And now, somebody who's very, very enthusiastic but doesn't have, doesn't have great skills yet will eventually work out for themselves the flaws in their own plan, but that's possibly one of the best learning situations for them to be in. If you dis dissuade them right from the word go, then you'll make them think their entire idea is bad, not just certain parts of it. So where else does Debian fit in? We need to play well with others. Now, at various points, we need to work well with other people in Debian, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Did nobody try to warm this crowd up before I started? <laughs> 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 we need to work with our users, don't we? Yes, <laughs> Why do we need to work with our users? Go on, pop question. Yeah. If we don't work well with our users, where do we get our, next, our new developers? And you know, where, where do we press gang those people into signing up for the new maintainer process? Of course, we also need to work with upstreams. <laughs> um, the vast majority of the software we've got, let's be honest, isn't actually ours. We've, we've polished it, we've, we've made it nice, we've hacked bits off one place, put them in another, we've made it play nicely with all the other stuff that we ship, that we ship in the archive, but we didn't write it all. But, so we should be working well with those people who did that, try to be nice with them, try to encourage them to take our changes, but don't necessarily fall out with them. Obviously, there are some special upstreams, I'm sure we all know some of those, <laughs> but we've got to try working with them. I mean, even, God forbid, we work with other distros. I've been to enough conferences around the world over the last couple of years where I've bumped into people from Fedora, from Gentoo, from Red Hat, from Mandriva, even, dare I say it, some Ubuntu folks. <laughs> and you know what? Most of them are very similar to us. They're trying to produce a distro. They're trying to do cool stuff. And we may be arguing about the really, really, really nitty-gritty details, but, God, we, we really do agree on the vast majority of it. Let's work with them. I know a lot of us already do. This isn't, um, this, I know I'm not trying to teach people to suck eggs here, but, hey, whatever, I've got to you know, come up with something. <laughs> and finally, work with everybody. Share the code. Whatever changes we've got, absolutely, we want to push. Don't necessarily assume that because you put your stuff into Debian that it's Debian's and nobody else should be able to use it without coming and paying you or coming and, and you know, buying you lots of beer. The whole point is we're working on this because we love the code we're doing and we want people to use it. That was what we started with. That was what RMS started with the, with the GNU project. It's what Ian Murdoch started Debian for. We want to share what we've got and even, I know it's making me sound like a hippie, Share the love. <laughs> Yay, and I have rushed through my slides very quickly. What else should we do? Debian, I, I think, although certain people might have suggested it's always looking like it's going to implode, I don't think it's going to happen. Well, at least not for a while. We do. You know, but... <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> exactly. We're not about to. We're not about to die. But please, life support isn't a good place to be. Let's carry on having fun. Let's carry on trying to do new stuff. Because, and this is where I can do the Yoda impression almost. More fun leads to more people. More people leads to more fun. Hands up, anyone here who doesn't want to have fun doing what they're doing in their spare time? Thank God for that. But as I say, if you're not really, please, what are you doing? So, any more suggestions? What should we be doing? I mean, I've got a few more things to talk about as well, but which I don't have slides for because, hey, I'm crap. Go on, Martin. Pass on you, pass him a microphone. I have the microphone. Ah. Is it on? Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Um, in the beginning of your talk, you said we're the universal operating system, and you highlighted some of the dimensions. Um, you said there's users, and there's developers, and there's data centers, and there's laptops, and then there's desktop people, and then there are people who work on the shell and so on and so forth, you get the picture. Um, at LCA last year, I had a boff where I asked this question, what does it mean to be universal? And we couldn't really come up with one answer to that. Universal is sort of precludes all of the answers, right? We cool. want to be everything all so, at once. So does that mean it's the best possible marketing slogan? Yes. It is awesome. <laughs> but is it sustainable? Can we do it? Is this something that 
is this the goal that we need to pursue? Because you said yourself that our core teams are understaffed and that we do have problems in the project, scaling problems. Um, if we continuously try to go into all directions, is this really what we want to be doing? Is this what we can do in the long run? That's a very good question. Ian, I'm sure uh, Ian has I an answer for you. It's on. Yes. Um, well, I think I've got an answer to that, which is that Debian really isn't any one thing at all. Debian is more like a, a, a venue than it is nowadays, mm. you know, a, a coherent project with a single set of goals. And what that means is inevitably, like any, like the whole free software world, we're all pulling in different directions and each of us improving the system in our own way. And so it's what we make of it. And I don't think we need to change that at all. Yeah. On average, we make progress. Okay, but then go back to the core teams and look at um, look mm. at some of them and ask the question whether, um, for instance, I mean, uh, the, I don't. I'm going to pick the release team, but I yeah. don't want to yeah, um, put the release team up in spot because of of anything. But um, I mean, the release team is at the same time challenged mm. with uh, releasing the universal operating system, which by definition is never going to be complete, but also to meet an 18 to 24 month release cycle. And we know that this has been problematic and difficult in the past mm -hmm. because it does affect the entire well, let's, project. Well, let's be careful about this, Martin. I, I think it's important that we not get sort of too hung up about the thematic thing of being universal or not being universal. What really would help is if sort of everybody working on the project and everybody working on one of the core teams were to get reasonably specific about what things really are impediments to their ability to make forward progress and to meet the objectives that they and those around them are trying to set. And if there are specific elements of, you know, what we do as a project that, you know, are <coughs> are causing more trouble than they are, you know, adding benefit, then those are things that we ought to identify and address. But I get a little worried sometimes when we start attacking the, the, the big picture thematic thing without somehow drilling down into to specifics fairly quickly. I mean, I, I, I understand there's sort of the, there's always a tension between the bottom view of the world and the top down view of the world. But um, it's not clear to me that having a, a sort of a long term um, vision objective of being a universal operating system in and of itself um, gets in the way of our being successful in any of these things. It's when some twisted version of what it means that we ought to be doing now in order to, in that direction, it's allowed to end up sort of controlling our specific behaviors that, that things go squirrely sometimes. So um, I'm much more interested in, in figuring out how to sort of at the things that really are, you know, sort of. Um, Putting impedance in the path to success than I am, a, you know, trying to change the the. So, so, can I have microphone, please? Yeah, Andy. Okay. Okay. So, um, let me please so answer a bit of the questions from Madak about. I think I have some opinions about the leasing. Um, I think the question is asked wrong. It's not to say whether the, the least team has to. That's, that's even the wrong part of the, of the sentence. It means, do we as Debian want to release in a certain time frame? If so, the least team is delegated by all of us to drive that. But only we as Debian whole can release. And I really think that a universal operating system is something good and helpful, also for the, the least team. And I don't really think that our diverging goals they are a bit different, of course. Uh, but in the end, if you look back at our social contract, it says that the users are our priorities. And I think this is really very, very true. And of course, we have very different users with very different wishes. And of course, we can't say you make everybody really 100% happy. But we can, we can offer a really great platform where a lot of people can be quite happy with it. I think we are good in Debian on that set. We could be better, and we should try to get better. And that's something we need to do, and not only today, but just every day, every year, and then we can, well, even grow faster than we already are. Absolutely. Right, I think Colin has something to say. Um, Steve, 
this is, you know, so this universal operating system thing really seems kind of easy, and I think we need to make it a bit harder. Yeah. Um, so, uh, more seriously, it's actually kind of uh, what I, um, it's kind of interesting, your, your definition of use universal operating system. I've seen that definition floating around um, a lot, and I'm sort of puzzled. There seems to be someone missing. All the little Debian offshoots, you know, the Ubuntu's mm. of the world, the um, the people who are taking Debian and turning it into a product um, mm. that's, you know, as as, De as Bidale told us, uh, was you know running our mobile phone calls. Um, mm. All the people who are taking Debian and um, basically using it as a basis for something beyond Debian. Um, and I at least would like to. Um, to see that as part of what we're talking about in terms of being a universal operating system as well. Sure. I mean, oh, so I should probably clarify. I mean, this isn't necessarily my cl classification of what the universal operating system is. This is to try and work out why we have different people with such different ideas of what Debian is. Um, you know, why people, why the quotes that, that I just provided, at least some of them, were so very different. It's, yeah, it's difficult. Colin. So I've never been a, a huge fan of the universal operating system slogan, but the thing that attracted me to that sort of presentation of Debian when I first joined was that it, uh, it seemed to encourage us to keep an open mind, yeah. uh, that we wouldn't certain certain avenues or certain groups of people or certain organizations just because we hadn't done that just mm. because it wasn't the thing that we started out to do. So when we, you know, when Debian started, we weren't mm. doing desktops, laptops, data centers, mm. mobile phones, telcos. We weren't doing everything under the sun, but we weren't ruling them out. Sure. And uh, I think that's a very he healthy attitude for a project of this size mm. with such uh, divergent attitudes and divergent yeah. people. Uh, I don't think we need to uh, not into we're doing everything right now, but... Mm. Uh, but we're certainly not ruling out doing everything. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And, and to sort of add on to what Colin said, I think one of the... Oh, you want me to stand up? Yeah, I guess I can do that. <laughs> Show off the pretty shirt after all, right? <laughs> um, <coughs> so I think one of the things that's really important about this is it goes to sort of the individual actions that individual developers take on a daily basis. Part of what I like about the, the universal theme and part of the reason I sort of reinvigorated it back in my second, I guess, DPL campaign was that um, I had this notion that we were at that time getting into a situation where individual developers working on packages or pieces of infrastructure would sort of exercise more editorial control than they really needed to sometimes. Um, they were often taking fairly myopic views of how Debian was going to end up being used. Um, you know, a very simple example from my own experiences. I thought I understood how people used NTP on computers. And, um, you know, all of a sudden the fact that people might actually be do, trying to do uh, a reasonable time synchronization of machines that didn't have persistent network, a whole different model of usage and that I hadn't thought about uh, uh, popped up and came along. And so this notion that when somebody else comes up and files a a bug report or a wish list or an enhancement request or offers up a patch that adds some functionality that you wouldn't have thought was necessary or useful, the, the notion that you had this as a contextual framework to sort of expand your thinking a little bit and see, you know, can I help make the world a better place by adding support for that behavior, you know, that, that's where to me this stuff gets really useful. Not that we try to do everything all the time for everybody, but that, you know, inclusive in our thinking. Right. While BDL is still up, <laughs> um, I, presume, I don't know how much people have heard about, there was a, an announcement just a couple of days ago uh, about a new group being set up in the US, um, Open Source for America. Um, in fact, do you want to give BDL the microphone back? Sorry, Martin. Um, I want to go ask BDL to, ask, to mention it, say a few words about that. Uh, this is something that has been only just literally in the last few days come into, into public knowledge. Um, and it's a really great uh, movement to try and push more and more of, let's be honest, the biggest economy in the world to use more and more free software. I'm sure we'd all like to see that. Bidel, please. Yeah, this is a new um, organization that um, has just coalesced within the last couple of weeks. Um, I first heard about it um, Sunday, 
Gosh, what's today? Yeah, last Sunday. So it's been less than a week ago. And uh, I very quickly got in touch with Steve, and, and we had a little discussion about the uh, documents that were floating around very privately at that time, and we agreed that it seemed 100% uh, like something that Debian would want to be involved in, so we very quickly um, pushed the right buttons to get Debian listed as one of the original founding members. We didn't immediately go talk about it on um, public mailing lists and stuff because there was a complete blackout on um, you know, public information and, and media release of uh, knowledge of the existence of the organization until it was announced at, uh, I guess it was Tim O'Reilly's uh, keynote at OzCon on Wednesday morning in the U.S. Yeah. Um, as you might, as you might be able to imagine um, certain other um, participants in the IT um, business world uh, might have had strong motivation to try and stir up the media a little bit in confusing ways if they'd gotten prior knowledge of what was happening. Uh, what this organization is about is um, to advocate for more use of free software in the United States federal government. Um, and it's really about that simple. It's not specifically a lobbying organization. There's a big distinction in the U.S. tax code and behavioral rules for organizations between a lobbying group and a advocacy uh, group. Uh, this will be an advocacy group. Um, the participation in this does not in any way, shape, or form mean that we are endorsing the specific behaviors or um, positions taken by other members of the alliance, but simply that um, all of the members of the alliance have agreed to um, collaborate on trying to encourage uh, the United States federal government and all of the things that it puts money into, uh, into uh, taking more advantage of and including uh, more looking at uh, free software alternatives in their procurement processes and so forth for the future. So. Uh, I think this is mostly of uh, value and import to folks inside the U.S. Uh, on the other hand, uh, as we've learned in the last few years, uh, things that happen in the U.S. often tend to percolate out to other places. So um, hopefully uh, adding this to the growing list of uh, national advocacy organizations around the world that are pushing for more use of uh, uh, free software, open source, whatever we choose to call it uh, at the moment in various uh, places will help make uh, you know, the world safer for the bits. Martin, did you want this back? Yeah. Is, is it okay if I go back to the topic of universal operating system? By all means. I wouldn't <laughs> want to put you off. Um, earlier on in the, your talk, yeah. um, you asked the question or you asked the audience to put up the hands, those people who think that we are actually the universal operating system. Yeah. Could I see those hands again? The ones that were up earlier? All right. Is that a maybe? We're hmm. trying, all yeah, right. Exactly. Well, that's exactly <laughs> the point that I'm trying to make. Is it was not the majority of people who had their hands up right now. Mm. Um, I'd like to know what's stopping us. What mm. those people who didn't put their hands up, I could make them all stand up now, but I won't. Yeah. Um, what, what do you think is keeping us from being the universal operating system? And I wonder whether, um, what I'm thinking about, whether this could be something that we could... Uh, you know, start a process to discuss this afterwards because for some people, people are going to have something to say about this right now. But I think there is a lot of uh, content that could be developed if you actually sit and think about this for a second. So I'd like to encourage everyone to do that. And uh, I guess I'll send an email around when I think about, or somebody else thinks about a way in which we could collect these ideas. So I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure how many people I speak for, but. To me, it seems more like a, a slogan, and it's not really a meaningful question to say, are we the universal operating system? What does it mean? If, if it means what Bdale was talking about, then, then I think that's what we've already got. Um, it, Debian is the one place where you can, with a reasonably good chance of success, go to some random maintainer for a piece of software and suggest to them that it would be nice if it did something completely weird and actually get a fair hearing. Um, and that... That's really valuable. But to say, you know, does that mean I want to stick up my hand and say we are the universal operating system? Does that mean that we should be the one operating system that everybody in the world should run as is? That's a very <laughs> 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 that's a that's a very different question. And so, you know, I, I think concentrating too much on this marketing slogan, we're we're a mm. bit in danger of swallowing our own marketing here, and we should, you know, we should carry on with that in mind, try to be all things to all people and uh and maybe just, yeah, yeah, get on with it. We may, we may well never get there, but it's a nice thing to try for. <laughs> yeah. 
Ouais. So, Madag... Oh, okay. Uh, Madag asked uh, how many people believe Debian is the universal operating system. I would like to ask uh, to raise your hand if in your everyday Debian task, you, your goal is to make Debian the operating system. If you think of that every time you do things for Debian, if it's something that, as Ian said, is a uh, slogan that is hung in the web page, but... Uh, Okay, shy at first, but quite a good turnout. Okay, so that was all. Mm. Yeah. Anybody else? Good God. Ah, and Jessica. Okay, it's on? Yeah. Um, okay. Is this working? Okay. It's a bit temperamental. Okay. Um, well, you know, I'm not a It's gone. <laughs> Try the other one. Okay. This doesn't work too. Okay. Um, yeah. So, most of you know I'm not a coder myself, but um, maybe I can say something a different perspective, like uh, maybe user or something. Well, according to the last um, sentence you were um, showing on your slides, uh, where people were giving feedback or how, what they think about Debian, the last one was basically the most stable um, operating system I ever used. So mm. that's basically the reputation that Debian ran over, otherwise others would not use the base mm. to create something. I think you already have. Well, what should I say? And I think there's still to work on, sure, because um, if you would be like perfect, it doesn't exist. But I think there already is a huge amount of uh, good stuff that is already being um, realized. And I think there's no reason to feel um, privileged in any kind of way. That's what I think. Right, next thing is, again, I this is something I never got around to slides for. We have some summer code students here, I hope. Yes, no? Anybody going to admit to it? <laughs> oh, God, they're all hiding. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I can see Arthur right there. So come on, Arthur. Come on, stand up. Are any of the others around at all? No. Oh, well, right, Arthur. <laughs> I'm going to come, people. <laughs> now, Arthur, no, <laughs> was one of our successful summer code students last year. He was so enthusiastic that he sta he, that straight away afterwards, he came round onto IRC and beat me up for being a crap admin last year, and that was fair. I was, I, but, but of course. The second half of that was then, of course, he then had to volunteer to be an admin himself for this year, and he's done an astounding job of getting our students organised, much better than I ever did. Um, and he's now in the new maintainer queue. Please, God, let's get him fast-tracked, because we need people like this. Um... I think that is basically it for what I have to say now. Obviously, I'm going to be around. Please, there's quite a few of you I'd like to have face-to-face um, -face discussions with and buy beer, whatever. Um, <laughs> yes, Martin, I did promise I owed you beer. I can't remember what for, but I'm sure I do. Um, yeah. Um, one thing I will point out um, that... that the people who are in the SPI buff this, this morning will be aware that Debian has a rather large amount of money in the bank, probably an unhealthy amount of money. So we're actually looking for suggestions on useful, for Debian, ways of, ways of spending that money. Now, I, I, <laughs> I appreciate holidays in the Bahamas or whatever might sound, sound useful to some, 
but probably quite might be difficult to justify to uh, to the tax authorities. Um, we. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, I have added a boff to the schedule for the 29th, which is next Wednesday. In case you haven't seen it already, you need to make sure you update the sh the, the, your view of the schedule periodically. Talks can and will move around, and new ones appear. Um, if you have any ideas, if you can't make that talk, please, by all means, mail me, come and cost me around a conference, whatever. I, I don't bite much. Um, or please, by all means, come along and help in a discussion about what, what we can do. We have somewhere north of $100,000 in the bank. That's actually beginning to get difficult for, for us to deal with. Um, if we have too much money, we become a target for people who want that money. Um, it might sound ridiculous, but really, that's the, that's the state of the world. It, so please, if you have useful suggestions on what we can do with that that would make Debian a better place, that would make the world a better place through Debian, please let me know. Okay? Um, unless there's any more questions, I'll let you all go early. Yeah. <laughs>